Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum guys. So today we are going to study about plant nutrition. Okay, so uh, let's begin. Okay. Okay guys, I hope you guys uh, have read okay uh, the slide and also the note okay I have given to you so that this can give you a little general information okay what we are going to learn about okay so this topic is about plant nutrition okay so we are going to touch on IGCSE syllabus okay so let's begin Okay, the first one you should know about uh, photosynthesis. Okay, so actually photosynthesis, uh, I'm sure you guys have learned, okay, uh, previously, okay. So this is uh, the words equation. Okay, uh, equation has two, okay, it's either words equation or chemical equation. Words equation maksudnya persamaan perkataan. Okay, kalau chemical equation, uh, persamaan kimia. So, this is words equation. This is a chemical equation. So, if you notice for words equation, in order to proceed with photosynthesis, you should have, uh, no, no, you, you, you should not have, plant should have, okay. Uh, sorry. So, plant should have carbon dioxide and also water. Okay, so by having these two, with the help, with, sunlight and also chlorophyll okay the product of photosynthesis okay are glucose and oxygen uh, okay uh, so if you notice here uh, if you want to write down the uh, words equation for uh, photosynthesis you should begin with these two okay and then in the error okay you should put sunlight and chlorophyll Okay, right now, some of you uh, might be confused. Teacher, can I uh, write chloroplast? Okay, if you write chlor chloroplast here, you are wrong. Why? Because uh, the one that absorbs the sunlight is chlorophyll, not chloroplast. Okay, can you understand? The one that absorbs sunlight. Because we know that in order to do photosynthesis, plant require uh, sunlight, right? So sunlight will be absorbed by chlorophyll. So that's why uh, sunlight and chlorophyll, we put them together here. Okay. And the products are glucose and oxygen. So if you notice, this is chemical equation. This is words equation. So in order to do photosynthesis, you should have six molecule of carbon dioxide, six molecule of water, Okay, and then it will produce one molecule of glucose. Uh, so can you see the difference between these two? Okay, and then it also will pro it will produce six molecule of oxygen. You just remember six six one six. Uh, but here for sunlight and chlorophyll, there is no chemical words for them. So you just write sunlight and chlorophyll. So in the exam, if they ask you write words equation, this is your answer. Write down the chemical equation. This is the answer. Okay, so far so good. Okay, guys. So I just want to touch on uh, a few things. Okay, not everything because I think uh, the rest of it is very straightforward information. You can read on your own. Okay. Okay. The next one we are going to study about uh, the structure of the leaf. Uh, okay, guys. Okay. So this is leaf. Okay, so when we uh, do a cross section, okay, when we do a cross section, okay, we you and when you look at the microscope, this is how the inside structure of leaf. Okay, so we are going to study one by one. Okay, so this is the upper side and this is the lower side. Ni bagian atas, ni bagian bawah daun. Okay, so the first one you have upper epidermis cell. Okay, upper epidermis cell. Okay, at the bottom also you have epidermis. But you should change the words to lower. Ha, yang ni upper, yang berada ke atas, yang ni lower, berada di bawah. Okay, so it the name of the cell is called upper epidermis cell. Lower epidermis cell. Okay, can you understand? 
Okay, so what is the function of upper epidermis? Okay, the upper epidermis, if you notice, on the surface, there is a cuticle. Ah, this is what we call cuticle. Ah, ni awak tengok ni warna orange ni. So this is what we call cuticle. The function of cuticle is to minimize the water loss. Ataupun the function of cuticle is to minimize transpiration. Okay, to minimize transpiration. Untuk mengurangkan kadar kehilangan air lah. So we can say cuticle ni fungsi dia seperti umbrella. Ha, macam payung. Untuk apa? Untuk macam awak, when you are exposed to the sunlight, you will sweat, right? Awak akan berpeluh. Bila awak berpeluh, awak kehilangan air. Betul tak? So, in order to prevent that, you use umbrella. So that you will less sweat. Ha, sama juga dengan uh, leaf. They want to uh, less uh, apa transpiration. So that's why they have cuticle. So the function of cuticle on upper epidermis cell is to minimize. Okay, minimize the water loss ataupun transpiration. Itu saja. Okay, and then bear in mind, apa epidermis ni, fungsi dia yang kedua adalah it is transparent. Okay, it is transparent. Okay, transparent maksudnya it will allow, okay, it will allow the sunlight to penetrate. Uh, it will allow the sunlight to penetrate to the leaf. Dia akan membiarkan cahaya matahari itu boleh masuk ke dalam daun. Sebab tu dia transpiration. Eh, transparent. Okay. So, remember for upper epidermis, two function you should know. The first one has cuticle. Number two, they are transparent. Why? To allow more sunlight to penetrate the leaf. So that sunlight tu akan digunakan for photosynthesis. Okay, the next one is palisite mesophyll cell. Nah, ni awak tengok ni. Palisite mesophyll cell. Okay, palisite mesophyll cell ni, fungsi dia yang pertama adalah they have chloroplast. Ni, orang ni jauh-jauh ni, maksudnya dia ada chloroplast. Apa fungsi chloroplast? To carry out photosynthesis. So, the first function of palisite mesophyll is it has chloroplast for photosynthesis. Itu fungsi dia yang pertama. Okay, can you understand? The second one is that if you notice the arrangement the arrangement of palisite mesophyll are close to each other. Ah susunan dia tu rapat-rapat ataupun the arrangement of the uh, palisite mesophyll cell are packed to each other. Ah maksudnya dia packlah rapat. Okey, why? Okey, fungsi dia adalah to increase ataupun to maximize the sunlight absorption. Okey, cikgu ulang balik eh. Uh, the arrangement of the palisite mesophyll cell is uh, packed ataupun close to each other. Why? So this can maximize the absorption of sunlight. Kenapa kita kena maximize sunlight absorption? To increase rate of photosynthesis. Sebab nak buat photosynthesis, kita perlukan uh, sunlight. Okay, so that's all. Okay, same. Okay, the next one is mesophyll cell. Okay, sorry, mesofil apa dah? Spongy. Ah, spongy mesofil cell. Kalau awak perasan palisade mesofil cell ni, they are rectangle. Ah, dari segi empat. Tapi kalau spongy mesofil, they kind kind of circle. Ah, dia macam bulat-bulat sedikit. Okay, so spongy mesofil cell, the first function is it has chloroplast. Ah, dia ada chloroplast. Why? To carry out photosynthesis. Apa bukti ni? Nampak tengok warna hijau ni. Okay, so the green color here uh, refer to the chloroplast. So bila dia ada chloroplast, maksudnya dia akan bo dia boleh buat proses photosynthesis. Itu yang pertama. Okay, the function of spongy mesophyll cell is to uh, have chloroplast that enable them to do photosynthesis. Itu fungsi yang pertama. Fungsi yang kedua untuk spongy mesophyll cell is that they are arranged loosely. Uh, macam kalau palisade ni, they are arranged closely. Kalau Mes, spongy mesophyll cell they are arranged loosely ha, dia macam tak rapat-rapat ha, dia ada ruang why to create a space a space a space tu maksudnya ruang udara ni awak tanya a space ha, a space ha, so maksudnya the reason why spongy mesophyll cell are arranged loosely is because to create a space a space apa fungsi a space a space will allow the gases exchange to occur Kenapa gases exchange kena occur? Sebab kita tahu, okay, sebagai contoh, 
Palisade mesofish cell dan juga spongy mesofish cell ni They want to do photosynthesis, betul tak? So produk photosynthesis tu akan hasilkan apa? Akan hasilkan oksigen So oksigen akan keluar ah, melalui ruang udara yang ada dekat airspace ni ah, So airspace fungsi dia to provide gases exchange ah, Okay, maksudnya Okay, stomata ni awak tahu kan lubang kan yang mana oksigen dan karbon dioksida boleh keluar masuk So untuk buat proses photosynthesis, karbon dioksida diperlukan betul tak? So karbon dioksida daripada luar akan masuk ke dalam leaf melalui stoma dia akan masuk Dan dia pergi kepada spongy mesophyll and also palisade mesophyll So spongy and palisade mesophyll, they will do photosynthesis So dia akan hasilkan oksigen So oksigen akan keluar daripada daun melalui stomata So can you see the function of a space here? How airspace is produced by having loose arrangement of spongy mesophyll cell. Boleh faham? Okay, so dua ni kita namakan sebagai mesophyll layer. Sebab apa? Inside mesophyll layer, you have palisade mesophyll cell and spongy mesophyll cell. Can you understand? Okay, good. Okay, the next one. Ah, Awak ada xylem and phloem. Okay, these two, xylem and phloem, we know them as a vein. Ataupun nama lain dia adalah vascular bundle. Okay, vascular bundle. Vascular bundle ajak macam mana cikgu? V-A-S-C-U-L-A-R. Vascular. Bundle. Bundle ajak macam mana? B-U-N-D-L-E. Vascular bundle ataupun vein. Vascular, vascular bundle dengan vein benda sama. So when I mention vascular bundle ataupun vein, you should know that I refer to xylem and phloem. So xylem and phloem you should know, okay. Xylem, the function is to transport water. Sebab apa? Kan nak buat proses photosynthesis kan kita perlukan air. Ha, ni awak tengok ni. Ni water. Ha, okay. So water come from where? From the xylem. Okay. So the xylem will uh, transport the water. Okay. Lepas tu, phloem fungsi dia apa? To transport Uh, glucose to transport uh, the product from photosynthesis okay uh, so that's all okay lepas tu uh, kita ada apa kita ada apa epidermis uh, okay fungsi dia sama juga seperti apa epidermis tadi lah and then if you notice in lower epidermis there is another cell attached to them which is known as a gut cell dalam bahasa Melayu sel pengawat okay so this is what we call gut cell Okay, so apa fungsi gut cell? The function of gut cell pertama sekali adalah it has chloroplast. Ha, ni awak tengok ni warna hijau ni. Ha, gut cell ni dia warna hijau. Okay, so the function of the first function of gut cell is to carry out photosynthesis. Why? It has chloroplast. Itu fungsi yang pertama. Okay, ha, so if you notice, okay, semua ni adalah daun betul tak? So Inside the leaf, there are three places where photosynthesis can occur. Pertama sekali dekat palisade mesophyll cell. Yang kedua adalah spongy mesophyll cell. Yang ketiga adalah gut cell. Tempat lain tak ada. Can you understand? Why? Because in that particular area, you can find chloroplast. Bila ada chloroplast, barulah dia boleh buat proses photosynthesis. Boleh faham? So there are three places where photosynthesis take place in the leaf. The first one, palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll and the last one is gut cell. Okay, fungsi pertama gut cell adalah to carry out photosynthesis since it has chloroplast. The next one is the function of chloroplast is to control the size of stomata ataupun stoma. Stoma, stomata sama eh. Okay, the function of gut cell is to control the size of stoma. So bila gut cell to contract Contract tu maksudnya dia mengembang Ataupun when the gut cell expand Okay, the stomata ataupun stoma open Boleh? Kalau gut cell tu shrink, mengecut Stomata will close Okay, can you understand? Okay, the last one, stoma What is the function of stoma? Stoma will allow the gases exchange to happen Oksigen boleh masuk, sorry Oksigen boleh keluar, carbon dioxide boleh masuk Untuk apa? Foto, proses photosynthesis Dan juga the water You know transpiration? Transpiration also happen in the leaf, right? So the water also will be evaporated as a water vapor through stoma Okay Okay guys, so if you look under microscope So this is how the Inside structure of leaf looks like. So ni awak tengok ni apa epidermis. Okay, yang ini palisade mesophyll cell. Lepas tu yang bulat-bulat ni spongy mesophyll 
set. Ha, lepas tu kita ada xylem and phloem. Ha, lepas tu kita ada gut cell kat sini. Ha, this is another one. Ha, this is the clearer one. Ha, awak tengok ada apa epidermis, kita ada palisade mesophyll cell, kita ada spongy, kita ada a space, kita ada gut cell, stomata and so on. And this is how stoma and gut cell looks like. Ni stoma. Eh, sorry, ni stoma, ni gut cell. So maksudnya bawah pada leaf ni There are so many stoma You can see Okay, can you understand? Ha, ni dia cakap apa pula ni? Carbon dioxide leaf adaptation Okay, carbon dioxide is obtained from the air Okay, ya betul lah Carbon dioxide tu dia ambil daripada udara Untuk apa proses fotosintesis lah There is about uh, There is not much available Because there are only about 0.04 of air is carbon dioxide therefore the leaf must be efficient to absorb it uh, so you have to know that in our atmosphere the concentration of carbon dioxide is 0.04 percent uh, so maksudnya leaf tu dia kena absorb as much as possible carbon dioxide sebab apa untuk buat proses photosynthesis okay okay guys let's continue Uh, okay, yang ni boleh baca sendiri ya. Eh. Kita okay, rasa it's very straightforward information. Okay, okay the next one. Uh, okay, uh, cikgu nak explain using the diagram. Okay, uh, so the rest of this uh, paragraph you can read on your own. Okay, okay, aku bawa barang apa ni? Okay, aku tengok ya. Eh. How the material from photosynthesis get into the leaf? Okay, so if you focus uh, on this diagram, so this is sunlight, okay, this is um, um, plant, right? So uh, the sunlight is exposed to the leaf, so the chlorophyll will absorb the sunlight, right? And also uh, the carbon dioxide also will be absorbed, okay, will enter the leaf through the stomata. So bila ada sunlight, bila ada carbon dioxide, this will enable the A plan to do photosynthesis. Okay, not to, not to mention also water. Uh, kan proses photosynthesis kan kita perlu ada water plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide you get from atmosphere and carbon dioxide will enter the leaf through stomata. Kalau air pula, water is gained when the soil absorb. Uh, when the soil absorb the, sorry, when the root, uh, okay, akar tu. When the root absorb the water. So air tu akan bergerak masuk ke dalam Uh, tumbuhan melalui xylem right because xylem the function is to transport the water so xylem transport water sampai lah dekat leaf so water tu akan digunakan untuk proses photosynthesis okey ha uh, ni dia cakap apa ni how the raw material for photosynthesis get into the palisade mesophyll cell ha uh, okey bagus okey as i said just now the soil it will absorb uh, water right So the water will enter in the root. Dalam root pun ada xylem. Boleh faham? So xylem tu dia akan transport air daripada root pergilah kepada xylem yang ada dalam leaf. Ni awak tengok ni. Warna merah ni. Warna merah ni menunjukkan xylem yang ada dekat leaf. So the water brought from the root in the xylem vessel. And then the water will travel to the chloroplast by osmosis. Ha, maksudnya air tu akan bergerak daripada xylem, dia akan pergi kepada spongy mesophyll cell. Lepas tu dia akan pergi kepada palisade mesophyll cell. Sebab apa? Air tu diperlukan untuk proses fotosintesis. Bila dia masuk ke dalam uh, sel, dia akan terus masuk ke dalam uh, apa? chloroplast. Sebab apa? Dalam chloroplast ni dia dia akan buat proses fotosintesis. Itu untuk air. Kalau sunlight ni awak tengok ni. Ha area warna kuning ni. Sunlight akan terus masuk ke dalam chloroplast. Kemudian carbon dioxide dia akan masuk melalui uh, stomata. So carbon dioxide diffuse through stomata from atmosphere. The carbon dioxide diffuse through air space. Ha, ni ada air space kan sebab the arrangement of the spongy mesophyll cell. So dia akan terus masuk ke dalam chloroplast. Okay so kalau awak tengok anak panah merah ni uh, carbon dioxide. Anak panah warna biru water. Anak panah warna Kuning ni adalah sunlight. So, you have all the ingredient required for photosynthesis. Can you understand? Okay guys, so this one, uh, yang ni table ni, uh, it show to you the adaptation. Okay, yang ni cikgu dah explain dah tadi. Uh, okay, so if you cannot 
catch what I said just now, you can refer to this table because they tell you the same thing. Apa yang cikgu explain kat sini tadi. Ha, ni. Ha, ingat tak cikgu explain tadi? Ha, apa epidemis, palisat mesofil, apa fungsi dia dan sebagainya. Okay. So, the one that I said just now is summarized here. So, you can read on your own. Okay. So, next we are going to study about the use of glucose. Ha, okay. The use of glucose. Okay. Let's begin. Okay guys, so let's continue. Okay, so the next one, we are going to study about the product of photosynthesis. Okay, as you know that there are two products of photosynthesis, which are oxygen and also glucose. Okay, you have to know that uh, once the oxygen is produced, the oxygen will move out, okay, through the stomata of the leaf. Okay, so like this, you see. So, for example, uh, palisite mesophyll cell and spongy mesophyll cell and also uh, gut cell, they will do photosynthesis, right? So, the product from that uh, is oxygen. So the oxygen will move out, okay, from the leaf through stomata. Okay, but the next product is glucose, right? So what happened to the glucose? Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this is the plant that it contain leaf. So leaf is the place where the uh, photosynthesis uh, will occur. So the product from photosynthesis is glucose. So from leaf, the glucose need to be transported okay to the all part of the plant okay including the stem root and also to the fruit okay because we know that uh, glucose is important for cell respiration okay cell, cell respiration is the process to produce energy okay for example in the root okay root should have energy why because the function of the root is to absorb the water. In order to absorb the water, the root should have energy. So energy gained from glucose. Because when the root has glucose, it can do respiration. Okay, but you have to know that in order to transport glucose to the all part of the plant, it is not that easy. Why? Uh, this is the reason. Okay, you see here. Okay. Uh, glucose is a simple sugar. It is soluble in the water and quite uh, a reactive substance. If not, if it is not, therefore, uh, a very good storage molecule. First, being reactive, it might get involved in a chemical reaction where it is not wanted. Okay, so this is the problem if you want to transport glucose because you know that glucose is a very uh, reactive uh, molecule. So it can easily uh, be, you know, involved in any chemical reaction. So that's why uh, in order to transport uh, glucose, we need to change them into sucrose first. Uh, so and then once it get into in the form of sucrose, then it can be transported. Uh, so that's why you see here, from glucose, it will change. It will convert it into uh, sucrose. And then sucrose uh, will be transported in the fluum tube. Because we know that fluum okay, is the vascular bundle that will transport the uh, nutrient and so on, right? So the, the fluum will uh, transport the uh, sucrose okay, to the stem, to the root, and also to the fruit. Uh, okay, can you understand? And also to the shoot. Okay, so uh, that is the first reason why we cannot keep glucose okay, in the form of glucose. Instead, we have to change them into sucrose. Secondly, it will dissolve in the water in and around the plant cell and might be lost okay, from the cell. Okay. Thirdly, when dissolved, it will increase the concentration of solution in the cell which could uh, cause damage. So these three okay, is the reason why uh, glucose cannot be stored as a glucose. Instead, it has to be converted into sucrose. Uh, okay, can you understand? Okay, apart from that, you have to know that uh, uh, once the sucrose 
reach to the targeted area. For example, from leaf, we want to transport sucrose to the root, for example. Okay, once uh, the sucrose reach uh, to the root, okay, it will be converted back into uh, glucose. Okay, can you understand? Uh, so, dia akan tukar baliklah kepada glucose. Sebab apa? Glucose is needed for cell respiration. Uh, so, root ni dia akan gunalah uh, glucose tu untuk uh, cell respiration, untuk dapatkan tenaga. But, when there is a excessive, uh, bila ada lebihan glucose, this glucose ataupun sucrose, dia akan disimpan dekat root as a starch. Uh, as a starch. Uh, same goes to the, in the... Uh, what in the leaf as well. Uh, so bila ada banyak lebihan glukos dan sukros, dia akan disimpan dalam bentuk starch. Uh, dalam bentuk starch. Uh, ni awak tengok ni kat sini. Okay, the glukos is therefore converted into starch to be stored. Okay, so kalau kita nak simpan, kalau plant tu dia nak simpan glukos dengan sukros, dia kena tukarkan mereka kepada bentuk Starch. Uh, starch is a polysaccharide made of many glucose molecules joined together. Being a large molecule, it is not very reactive and not very soluble. Uh, so, bila tak reaktif, maksudnya we can store it longer lah. Okay, so it can be uh, made in a granule which can be easily stored in the chloroplast. So, glucose uh, so starch tadi, it will be stored in a specific location which is chloroplast. Okay, can you understand? Okay, enough with sucrose, glucose and uh, starch. Now we jump, eh, sorry. Now we jump to another uh, nutrient. Okay, so the next nutrient needed by the plant. Okay, for IG syllabus, there are two nutrients you should know. The first one is nitrogen and also magnesium. Okay, so you have to know that uh, this nutrient, okay, it can be uh, found in terms of ion. In terms of ion. So when they are in the form of ion, then uh, the plant can absorb it. Uh, for example, uh, carbohydrate, right? Carbohydrate need to be uh, digested into glucose. If, if it is in the presence of glucose, then our cell can absorb it. Uh, same goes here. When nitrogen in the form of ion and magnesium in the form of ion, then our plant, uh, uh, then the plant can absorb it. Okay, why nitrium and uh, ammonium ions are important? Because they are needed to make protein. Uh, you have to know that uh, plant also require protein. For what? For growth. Uh, for growth, to replace a dead cell, to, de to replace the damaged cell and so on, right? So what happened if uh, the plant lack of uh, nitrogen? So they will have weak growth. Uh, and also the yellow turns yellow. Uh, okay. The leaf, sorry, the leaf turns yellow. Okay, so this is magnesium. So magnesium must be in the form of magnesium ion. So magnesium ion is important to make chlorophyll. Uh, so you have to know that chlorophyll you can find in the chloroplast. Okay. So what happen if you lack of leaf? Deficiency tu maksudnya kekurangan. Okay, so yellow between the leaf, uh, the vein in the leaf. Uh, so this is not good lah because we know that chlorophyll is important to do photosynthesis. Okay, so when the plant cannot do photosynthesis, they will die. Okay guys, so the next one, you should know that how we can test uh, starch. I think this one is very familiar with you, okay, since forever. <laughs> Okay, uh, so in order to uh, test the presence of starch, you can use iodine. If there is iodine, you can see the the color becomes blue-black ataupun dark blue lah. Okay, blue-black dengan dark blue sama saja. So when there is a presence of starch, okay, you can you can see the the color uh, blue-black ataupun dark blue. Itu saja. If the uh, starch is not there, if the starch is absent, uh, what color you will see? You will see uh, yellow brown. Okay, yellow brown. Because yellow brown is the initial color for iodine. Okay, for iodine. Iodine ni warna asal dia adalah yellow brown. So, kalau ada starch, it will change from yellow brown uh, to the 
uh, dark blue. Tapi kalau ada starch, kalau tak ada starch, it will remain yellow brown. Okay dah. The rest of this, uh, you can read on your own. Okay. So this is the experiment. It's very straightforward, straightforward information. You can read on your own. Now we go for the next, uh, for the last page for before we dismiss the class. Now we are going to study about uh, the factor that affect the photosynthesis. Okay, the fact, the limiting factor that affect the photosynthesis. So how many of them? One, two, three, four. Okay, there are four uh, factor. There are four limiting factor that would affect photosynthesis. So we go one by one. Okay, so the first one is light intensity. Okay, the first factor is light intensity. So this is uh, the part C X is light intensity. Part C Y is rate of photosynthesis. So if you notice from point A to B, okay, the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. Is that true? Yes, because we know that light, light intensity itu masuknya keamatan cahaya, kecerahan cahaya itu. Cahaya, kalau kat sini cahaya malak, betul tak? Kalau kat sini cahaya terang. So when more light intensity there is there, so more photosynthesis can take place. So when we, when, uh, from A to B, we can say that the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. But, uh, between B and C, however, the light is not a limiting factor anymore. Sebab apa? Uh, because the, the plant receives enough light. Uh, maksudnya, at this point, dekat B ni, uh, the light intensity is enough, is sufficient. Uh, so, when the plant receives sufficient light intensity, this cannot increase the rate of photosynthesis. Instead, it will make the rate of photosynthesis become constant. Nah, okay, so maksudnya dia dah lebih hard dah. Because this is the light intensity required to have maximum rate of photosynthesis. Can you understand? Okay, good. The next one is about carbon dioxide. Uh, okay, so same goes here. Uh, part C X ni is the concentration of carbon dioxide. Y, uh, part C Y ni the rate of photo synthesis. So as you can see, the higher the concentration of carbon dioxide, the higher the rate of photo synthesis. Uh, but after 0.12 percent, uh, after eh, after 0.2 percent of carbon dioxide concentration, the rate of photosynthesis remain constant. Why? Because they have reached, uh, they have reached the sufficient concentration of carbon dioxide. Maksudnya, kalau tambah juga, it will not affect the rate of photosynthesis. It will make the rate of photosynthesis become fixed. Uh, sama sahaja. Okay, so this is the maximum amount that we should use. Okay. The next one is about temperature. So, uh, chemical reaction of photosynthesis can only take place very slowly at low temperature. Uh, so, bila low temperature, photosynthesis will happen slow. Uh, tapi, when you when the uh, when the temperature become warm, okay, the photosynthesis will become faster. Why? Because you have to know that in order to do photosynthesis, there are also a few, there is also a few enzyme will involve. Uh, enzyme kan ada ada optimum pH betul tak? So kalau 37 degree Celsius, the rate of photosynthesis can be maximum. Uh, okay. Okay. The next one is stomata. Okay. Stomata ni. Okay. When the stomata close, ni tengok ni. If the stomata is close, then photosynthesis cannot take place. Sebab apa awak tengok kat sini? Ah, okay, bila stomata close, the carbon dioxide cannot get inside the leaf. Ah, so, bila carbon dioxide tidak boleh masuk dalam leaf, can they do photosynthesis? No. Ah, boleh faham? Ah, itu maksudnya. When the stomata close, the photosynthesis cannot take place. Ah, okay. Ah, tapi, if the stomata uh, open, Uh, so the photosynthesis can take place. Okay, apa lagi cakap ni? Stomata often close if the weather is very hot and sunny. Uh, tapi ada kebaikannya juga eh kalau kalau stomata tu tertutup. Sebab apa? Uh, during drought. Okay, masa kemarau we know that the temperature is too high. 
So the water, the the plant tend to lose so many water. So in order to minimize the transpiration, the stomata need to be closed. Uh, this is to prevent too much water being lost. Ataupun, this is to minimize the transpiration. This means that a hot day, photosynthesis may slow down. So, kalau uh, cuaca terlalu panas, uh, transpiration akan uh, meningkat betul tak? Sebab tu stomata turun. So, sorry, sorry. Sebab tu stomata tu akan tutup. So, bila stomata tutup, uh, photosynthesis may slow down. Okay. So, uh, the next one, you are going to study about uh, glass house. Uh, growing crops in the glass house. Glass house ni maksudnya adalah rumah kaca. Uh, inside rumah kaca ataupun glass house tu, you can do your, uh, you can grow a crops. Okay, awak boleh tanam tanaman awak tu. Sebab apa bagus kalau tanam dekat uh, glass house tu? Sebab pertama sekali, uh, the temperature in the glass house can be keep at the optimum level to encourage the stock the tomato to grow faster and stronger okay so okay bila awak uh, uh, when you grow the crops in the glass house you can control the temperature uh, awak boleh buat temperature dia tu slow ke uh, tinggi ke dan sebagainya okay tapi kalau kita uh, if we grow naturally kita grow outside Uh, kat luar kan, kan kan boleh jadi kemarau, boleh jadi hujan, jadi winter betul tak So we cannot control of nature So uh, we can uh, grow our crops okay in the glass house Why? Because the first one, because we can keep the temperature in the glass house So that we can keep them in the optimum level And then the light also can be controlled uh, In the cloudy and dark condition, extra lighting can be provided And the light is not a limiting factor for the rate of photosynthesis. So contohnya sebagai contoh waktu winter because we know that during winter uh, the weather is gloomy right uh, dark uh, so uh, the plant cannot do photosynthesis so in the glass house uh, you can control the light awak boleh cerahkanlah cahaya tu supaya uh, this will enable the plant to do photosynthesis okay uh, At the same time, the concentration of carbon dioxide can also be controlled. Awak juga boleh control, okay, concentration of carbon dioxide. Okay, guys. So the last one is about the importance of photosynthesis. So I think this is very straightforward information you can read on your own. Okay, guys. So I think that's all for today. So I hope you guys can watch this video uh, until the end. Okay, make sure uh, you understand. If you don't understand, you just PM me personal, okay? Uh, and then uh, I will also attach, okay, the homework, okay, based on this uh, topic, okay? So please try to finish them, okay? So the next class, we are going to uh, discuss the answer. Okay, guys, so that's all for today. So Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye.